I'm meteorologist Carly Gomez tracking the latest on our Doppler radar over Northern California. We have been getting hit hard with constant showers in the valley as well as blizzard conditions for the Sierra as a blizzard warning is in place. Now, as you take a look at this map here, you can actually see all of the radar indicated rotation. And that's early funnel cloud type rotation happening up in the sky, but it is not a tornado until that touches the ground. And we have been getting dozens of these as of early this afternoon, still continuing as of 9 p.m. Friday. You're seeing a lot of that also to the northern portion of the state. That lightning bolt there you see near Fort Bragg that actually ended up being a lightning strike into a tree that caught fire. So very active weather pattern for us. And then further south, there was a tornado warning in place for areas around Madera County. And in fact, there are now two confirmed tornadoes in that area. As a lot of social media reports have come out, the National Weather Service in Hanford confirming that tornado and even showing and issuing and uh, push, pushing on their social media out there uh, videos of some tornado activity as well. As we've been tracking a lot of the Sierra spots, a lot of that heavy snowfall has continued tonight, really ramping up as we've seen heavy snowfall per hour rates of two to four inches through tonight is also expected. And take a look here at tornado near Madera really starting to make its way down. And as you actually saw this on video at this point, this would appear just to be a funnel cloud. So make sure if you ever see something like this, you're actually recording video that helps our spotters and the National Weather Service determine whether or not that was a funnel cloud or if it actually turned to a tornado and this video ended up actually confirming that it did touch the ground at some point in time you see a rotation happening from the funnel cloud all the way down to the ground where you actually started seeing some areas of debris flying up there so that's how they're able to confirm that a little bit better this sent in by Jillian Salgado thank you so much for putting that out there on social media so they can confirm that of course this is a small one if anything like this is happening, you want to keep your distance. Make sure you're not near any tornadoes just to capture video. I want to make sure you're very well aware of that. But if you do see it from a distance and you're zooming in, maybe you can try to capture that on camera. That is also very helpful. All right, taking a look at the blizzard warning in effect until Sunday now, 10 a.m. For a lot of these counties here, you can see them up Alpine, Amador, Calaveras, El Dorado, Butte, as well as Placer counties. We're going to see this in effect due to the strong wind gusts that will continue for Saturday as well as Sunday. And then more of that moisture coming in from the Pacific Northwest still making its way down. We have been even seeing areas of thunderstorms and even pushing the line up there. I haven't seen it, but I would love to see more thunder snow. I've seen it twice, but for this system, haven't seen anything yet. That would be fun to see. Thunder snow is basically a thunderstorm, but with snow versus rain. So pretty cool to see when you're out there. All right, taking a look here at our blizzard warning. We're also looking at a wind advisory for those valley spots until Saturday, 10 a.m. After 10 a.m., we're still going to see breezy conditions, even occasional wind gusts pushing in and out. But just to know that a lot of the strongest gusts will be lifting by that time. We'll still be pretty breezy, though, moving from Saturday to Sunday. All right, let's take a look at the wind gusts. Palisades Tahoe yesterday was seeing 145. Today, we're now seeing 167 mile per hour wind gusts being reported at the peaks here at Palisades Tahoe. And this is on the observations map that you can, anyone can really look up National Weather Service observations. There's weather stations posted throughout California and the nation. But when you zoom into Palisades area, you can see some of their reports coming in there, picking up gusts up to 167 miles per hour and 157 as well. All right, our future cast wind gusts continue to show the strong winds moving over the Sierra coming in out of the south. As of 10 p.m., you're going to still see very strong wind gusts and the strong winds continuing for these valley spots. Although a little bit of a difference here, we're going to start to see a sweeping motion coming directly from the west and then eventually sweeping its way up southwest movement there versus that southerly movement. We have two systems, two low pressure systems kind of working simultaneously together to bring us a strong wind gust as well as all this moisture and cold air. A lot of unstable weather conditions happening all at once. Now, as we move into Saturday, 2 p.m., still strong over the Sierra Crest. Things into the valley will start slowing down. Still a little bit strong in Fairfield, though, and then finally into Sunday. This is where things kind of just get more or less breezy in the valley versus strong wind gusts. All right, let's take a look at our 24-hour storm totals. These numbers, though, I have to let you know, were uh, at least picked up by around 6 a.m. New storm totals come out tomorrow morning. That's Saturday morning, close around 6 a.m. as well. We're looking at 19 to 20 inches of snowfall. Sierra Snow Lab, Sugar Bowl, Palisades Tahoe at 17, 16, Kingvale. And then also taking a look at Yuba Pass, 12 inches, so a foot there. Nine at Eagle Lakes, Bear Valley, 10 inches, 
four in Blue Canyon. And I want to compare this because this is going to be interesting to see. When we look into our last 24 hour model snowfall, it actually shows very similar numbers to that. Now, as we start pushing toward 922 p.m., you're looking at about 40 inches total. So that's a lot of snow in a short amount of time. And when I paused it around 6 a.m., it almost exactly showed me that 19 to 20 inch spot right around Donner, that Sierra Snow Lab area as well. And so does spring. So it's been pretty close on part of what we've been seeing. So as of 923, these numbers, I wouldn't be surprised if they're accurate as we start getting into tomorrow morning, Saturday morning. We'll start looking at numbers very similar to this around 27 to 40 inches from Emigrant Gap to Donner Pass. And then taking a look at Trekwood with 35 inches of snow as of about 930 p.m. 38 inches Kirkwood. A lot of these numbers have been picking up pretty quickly throughout the day as that system has pushed through, created a lot of unstable weather with those strong wind gusts. Now, as we take a look here, as we continue on, we're going to see really areas around Bear Valley, 29 inches, a little bit smaller here, but the system's still moving its way down south. These numbers will pick up for those regions as we move from Saturday to Sunday. All right, I want to talk about the two low pressure systems been causing all this mess. Everyone's saying, well, why is this different? It's not necessarily tapping into an atmospheric river, is it? Yes and no. What's happening with this one? Is it just tapping into a plume of moisture? The difference that we've been seeing is that these two have been way up in the Gulf of Alaska for quite some time. They're pulling in as we speak that cold Arctic air and they're working together. Notice this low pressure has been the first one to kind of make its way in as of Thursday and then into Friday and it's been stalling out a little bit, continuing to circulate a lot of that moisture in the Pacific Northwest and over Northern California. Meanwhile, this system is dragging in the cold Arctic air and combining it as that continues to shift its way south. That's creating a lot of unstable weather. I keep saying that word because you need unstable weather to create thunderstorms. You have a mix of very cold air mixing with warm moisture and you create kind of like a spark. That's where we see lightning strikes kind of coming in here as well as areas of a lot of plentiful moisture bringing in along with cold air that snowfall. So you have the freezing air and that moisture producing a lot of snow in a short amount of time. Taking a closer look here, we're looking to the valley and all we have been seeing throughout most of the afternoon and through the night have been these solid lines of showers that continue to stack one behind the other just as they roll in from the Pacific Northwest. They're moving across the valley and continuing to create those rotations that early detection funnel cloud rotation happening within our radar. So we've been keeping our eye on that making sure we're not watching or you know skipping out on any kind of tornado warnings that could be in place, especially in the nighttime hours. That can be dangerous, of course. Now, as we get through the nighttime hours, we're going to be watching the snow levels begin to drop lower. We get little spots in between the clouds that open up. That's going to allow more cold air in. Also allow that elevation for snow to drop down. We do anticipate seeing it drop maybe as low as about 2,000 feet and maybe 1,500 feet, but I expect that to be a little further south Areas like Arnold, Sonora, seeing some of the lower elevation snow. Meanwhile, areas just around uh, 80 and 50 could be down to about 3,000 feet as we move from Saturday to Sunday morning. All right, taking a look at the future cast radar. Where's the system going? What are we going to see? By overnight, we're looking still at a lot of scattered showers. They're going to continue as we get into the early morning hours. But take a look at the low snow beginning to dip right around Arnold there. As you see that kind of close to Placerville as well, 3 a.m. on your Saturday. And then finally moving into your 1 p.m. hours of the afternoon. Now we get some more breaks. This is going to create some, again, more unstable weather, which could lead to more potential for thunderstorms and maybe even tornadic activity. So we'll keep our eye on that for Saturday as well. More snow pushing through the Sierra. And then finally Sunday. This is the day we initially thought, hey, the system's going to be moving quickly through here. We're going to get this gone by Sunday afternoon. At this point in time, it's kind of stalled out a little longer. So we're looking at more scattered showers on and off throughout the day. So find your window. You'll have a few periods in time around 11 to 1 to maybe get something done between 6 and 8 a.m. So you have some pockets, but not a lot. And then we'll finally see that snow in the Sierra continue, but at higher elevations, especially around Truckee South Lake Tahoe, still hovering just east of Arnold. And then finally, we get to Monday morning. We have one more chance for showers on and off throughout the day. Still continued snow. We do take a break for ourselves as we start getting in the middle of the work week. Looking at the model potential for snowfall totals to move into your Saturday morning, we're looking at additional 36 inches maybe for Donner. And then by Sunday morning could get up to about 63 inches more. So we're looking at a lot of snow still, and that's adding on to the 20 inches we've already seen at Donner. So that would put us closer to about 80, 83 inches as we continue through the storm system and into early next week.
Now, potential for the rain, it has been coming down. I know everyone's been saying, I'm sorry, but you said only a half inch to an inch and a half. It sounds like it's going on forever, and you're right. It has been. It really sounds like it is. But a lot of uh, weather stations aren't picking up on some of these rain totals. So it could be hitting your neighborhood and maybe not another. So while Sacramento is saying, hey, we can only see maybe a half inch more, if that thunderstorm lies directly overhead, that could bring you up from a half inch to an inch of rain. And this is why it's all over the place. And that's because we're getting scattered showers. You don't necessarily know where they're going. They're very scattered, but they're solid. When you get one, and it could be potential thunderstorm, you're going to get a lot in a short amount of time. Looking into your Monday 4.30 a.m., it looks like we could get an additional half inch to about an inch and a half of rain in the valley. Let's look at the 10-day forecast, although at this point in time, with all this wet weather, do temperatures really matter? At this point, as long as we're not freezing, we're pretty okay. We are going to be looking at temperatures, though, rising gradually in the mid-50s to upper 50s, then dropping down into those low 60s and mid-60s, pushing toward next weekend. We still have almost every other two days with on and off shower chances and a mix of sunshine Thursday and Friday.